Effect of Sight on Taste by Emily Reynolds from Lafayette High School. When you think of the word taste, you may picture eating or drinking and the flavor that comes with it. But the truth is that taste is much more complicated than that. Scientists used to believe that taste was a combined effort of your tongue, nose, and brain. Modern day research shows us a more complex truth. Taste is actually the joint sensation of using smell, sight, touch, taste, and memory. Sight is not only one of the most important parts of taste, but can also change your whole perception of a meal. You can immediately identify what you are about to eat and make split second decisions on whether you will like it or not. If an orange is placed in front of you, you will immediately identify that as an orange and all of your previous experiences with oranges will come to mind. This gives you an opinion on whether or not you will like that orange before you even put it in your mouth. Food companies know all of this by heart and are continuously testing new food sciences to subconsciously manipulate the consumer. They know someone is more likely to pick the item in a pretty packaging or that looks healthier inside over their competitors. People like to eat things that look appealing and so big food producers do whatever they can to market their product as visually attractive. One example of this is the fact that almost all fast food joints have red and yellow on their signs and paint them on their interior. These colors have been scientifically proven to grab attention, simulate your taste buds, and make you crave the convenience of fast food. You're eating with your eyes before you even walk into the restaurant. The experiment is designed to test how much sight could influence another person's opinion on food. I wanted to see if the different appearance of the same food would truly alter someone's perception of it. Would the subject say that they tasted the same or different? To do this, I took store-bought cookie dough to control for differences in dough and made plain royal icing for decorations. I decorated four of them to look unappealing and four others to look appealing. I then had my subjects rate the taste. My hypothesis was that the subjects would rate the more visually appealing cookie higher in taste than the less visually appealing one. I thought that the visual aspect of the cookie would have a significant effect on their taste. To do this experiment, I first bought pre-made sugar cookie dough from the grocery store. Then I baked it in the oven until it was cooked all the way through and looked like a sugar cookie. After that, I made a batch of plain royal icing for decoration. I then added in a bit of food dye to color the icing. When the cookies had cooled, I piped a bit of red, blue, and green on four of the cookies and then mixed them up to make an unappealing color. After that, I piped white icing and then blue icing to make a snowflake pattern on the four appealing ones. When the icing had hardened, I gathered my close family members and took them aside one by one to taste the cookies. I had them sign an informed consent waiver that included the list of ingredients. First, the subjects tasted the unappealing cookie. I asked them to rate the taste of that cookie on a scale from one to 10. Once the subjects had done so, I instructed them to take a bite of the appealing cookie and again rate the taste on a scale from one to 10. Here are a couple pictures of the process that it took to make the cookies. You can see the pre-made dough, the royal icing, and the cooked sugar cookies. On the left of the slide, you can see a picture of the four unappealing sugar cookies. They don't look great, but that was intended. On the right, you can see the appealing ones, which look a little better. The risk to me during this project was working with a hot oven. I had worked with an oven many times before this, and I was very careful whenever interacting with it which included wearing an oven mitt. The risks posed to the subjects were specific food allergies. The participants were all given an informed consent form to sign before tasting the cookies. This form included a detailed list of all ingredients used in the pre-made dough and the royal icing. In accordance with the COVID-19 restrictions, the only participants were immediate family members. The results of my experiment were actually really interesting. The subjects graded the taste of the cookies on a scale from one to 10, with one being a bad taste and 10 being a good taste. All subjects rated the unappealing cookie an eight, which is a little strange. Subject one rated the appealing taste a five, subject two a 10, subject three a seven, and subject four rated it a six. Three out of the four rated the unappealing cookies taste higher than the appealing cookies taste. Subjects also made some comments when they tested them. Most said that the unappealing cookie with the dark icing tasted more like chocolate or peanut butter than sugar. In contrast, some subjects said that the appealing cookie with the white icing tastes sweeter and maybe even more bland. I've compiled the results from the experiment into three graphs. The table at the top of the slide shows the subjects' different ratings for the unappealing and appealing cookies. 
The pie chart on the left shows the three people who rated the unappealing cookie higher in the light blue, and the one who rated the appealing one higher in the dark blue. The bar graph shows the same thing, but in a different format. From the results, it's safe to say that the subjects liked the cookie that looked unappealing better. So my hypothesis was proven wrong. Contrary to my hypothesis, the subjects actually rated the unappealing cookie higher, but they did say that they tasted vastly different. They rated them differently and said that they tasted like different cookies. They were actually surprised when I told them after the experiment that they were the same sugar cookie with the same icing. They said that the cookie with the darker icing made them think it was chocolate or peanut butter. This directly follows previous studies that even just a color can change your whole view of the item. The dark color had already been associated with chocolate and peanut cookies, which made them think this one was as well. The same goes for the cookie with white icing. Some said that it tasted more sugary or even bland. The white reminded them of sugar, and possibly something white that they'd eaten before was very bland. In conclusion, the visual aspect did subconsciously change the subject's perception of two of the same cookies, but in a different way than I expected. The colors of the icing made them taste the cookies differently. If I were to do this experiment again, I would use the same colors of icing for both cookies. I would also want to test this on more people, which was impeded by the pandemic. Even with the reduced numbers, this was a great learning experience and I'm the better for it. Thank you.